If you're like me, meaning an aquarium addict who's also on a budget, then buying used tanks is really the way to go. Only catch with that is a lot of them are on the older end and the seals are kind of on the out. So the best solution to that is learning to reseal a tank. I bought this tank used a while ago and built a standing canopy for it. I really like the tank because it's a unique dimension. It's not something that you see every day. Almost square, but a little bit taller. It's a 45 gallon. I'm really excited to reseal it so I can get this tank set up. Let's get going. The first thing you need to do is figure out if your aquarium really needs to be resealed. If you look up and down the seams of your tank and you're noticing a lot of frayed edges or even recession, then it's definitely time to reseal. Looking at my tank, none of the silicone looks great. In some spots it's receded back to the glass. Even in areas where it's a little more intact, it's still worn out along the edges. So I'll definitely need to reseal this. Something else you should be looking out for is the silicone between the glass panes. I won't be covering how to take apart and rebuild an aquarium today, which is what you'd have to do if you saw a ton of air bubbles in the seals between glass sheets. The first step is you want to take the bracket off the top of the aquarium. It's not really important for the bottom. I already got started on this and I actually ended up cracking it, but I should be able to fix that. I'm not too worried about it. The best way to pull the bracket off is to take a paint scraper and get underneath and try and peel as much of that silicone off as you can. And slowly start peeling it up. You'll need to do that both on the outside and the inside. And I'd recommend, you know, you not only use a kind of up and down motion, but you also get under there and use that corner to really scrape and break that silicone apart. Now it's time to peel back all the old silicone. It's very important to do a thorough job with this step because new silicone won't adhere to old silicone. You'll need to have a squeaky clean glass surface for a proper seal. I like to dampen up old crusty silicone with a wet rag before taking a razor to it. You want to be really careful when you're scraping silicone off of where two glass panes meet. So you can see that the bead of silicone wraps around here. We want to scrape everything off the glass, but what we absolutely don't want to do is damage any silicone between two sheets of glass, like this area here. Everything on the other side of this area is fair game. The easiest way to peel all of this off is to score a line along the seam with a razor blade. Go all the way from the bottom up to the top. If you look at it through this perspective, you're lining up the blade to scrape along this sheet of glass so that you can separate the seam from this sheet of glass. That way, you can come through with the paint scraper along this sheet, and with any luck, you'll be able to peel the whole bead of silicone off in one go. This seam went pretty easy, and I'll be honest, there was a lot more scraping involved on two of the other seams. Just keep going around the whole tank until you've peeled all the silicone off with the razor blade. I decided not to reseal the bottom of the aquarium because the silicone was in really good condition. It's pretty common for this to be the case because those areas are protected by substrate. Manufacturers of silicone always say it's UV resistant, but I kind of wonder about that when you look at this. I feel like the light has a lot to do with wear and tear. Um, but I suppose scrubbing algae off of it takes its toll over the years. After you've scraped for a while, you'll get to a point where it seems like you just can't get the last of that old crusty silicone off. At this point, you'll need to bring in the big guns, acetone. Douse a rag with acetone and wet down the area before taking a blade to it again. After scraping, make sure to come back with a watered down rag to remove any acetone. It's a very strong chemical 
that obviously breaks down silicone, making it easier for us to clean up. The downside is that if large amounts are left on the silicone holding glass sheets together, that's bad news. So wipe it down real quick like. The last step in cleaning is to take a wet sponge everywhere. Not only will it rub off the last of the silicone, but it will help clean up any remaining dirt. At this point, you should have nice and smooth, cleaned up looking edges at each corner of the tank. You'll need to use painter's tape if you want to get crisp edges, or if you're pretty handy, you can just wing it. Lay down the silicone without taping. I'm kind of clumsy sometimes, so I decided to tape it up. I give a gap slightly larger than the width of the glass, so if you're measuring from the edge, that's twice the width of the glass, plus a little. Then lay down some silicone. It doesn't have to be from the aquarium store or anything, but make sure that it's 100% silicone with no additives like mold inhibitors. That's bad for livestock. I prefer using black silicone, but you can use clear as well. Wipe down the beads of silicone with your finger to get a secure and consistent seam. Think about a new aquarium. You want it to look like that. Then pull the tape off as soon as possible. Silicone starts to harden along the surface in 15 minutes, so that's your window. Now it's time to get the brace back on top of the aquarium. Lay down a generous portion of silicone and press it into place. It's always a good idea to fill the tank and test it out for at least a few days. I'm also testing the stand I built, so I'm giving it a full week in my garage. Coming up soon, I'll be doing a bonsai scape in this 45 gallon or 170 liter aquarium. It's going to be for my Threadfin Rainbows who are currently in the 29 gallon. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more about aquariums.